And what about ye? 2014 Ford Transit Custom. And uh, this thing is in for a service. We already changed a few filters there. And the guy wants a brakes done. I don't know how you do it. What about Chi? What about, what about Tay? I, I can't do it. I just can't do it. So those are, believe it or not, they're customer supply parts, which is something that we don't normally fit. And uh, let's see. Brick wear sensors in that one, but no brick hardware, no shims, you know? And uh, just the pans in that one there. And front and back discs. So let's see now. What have I got there? Yeah, right, few maids on her. And the reason why he wants the brakes done, as far as I can tell, is that. And according to the owner, he's had this vehicle about two months, he told me. And at the time of recording this video, it's around mid October. So middle mid to late October. So according to this here, it was MOT'd at the end of July. So if he's owned it for two months, it's now mid-October, you know, there's August in the middle there. So it has a fresh MOT on it, you know, from when this guy bought this vehicle. So there's it there, 2014 Ford. So, bearing in mind this guy bought this with more or less a full year's ticket on it, well, let's have a wee look see and see if it's any good. Well, there's our, our brake wear indicator there, and uh, oh, what is that? That's good. We have a nice wee design to brake hose there. That's very nice. And uh, let me see, so that's CV joint there. Very nice. This one here is cable tied. Lovely. And is making an absolute mess of everything. So that's great. And uh, let's see, we'll move over to the other side. Oh, no more indicator over here either. And uh, oh, well, the brake hose is, is decent. Let's see, what's that up there? We can get that in the shot. Yeah, so that's the wire, indicator wire. Doing some sort of a wee loop there. And uh, the joints are okay on this side. And they're like original clips. All in there. So at the back, no brake wire indicator there at all. Looks a sort of freshish caliber. Yeah, this aren't too bad at the back. But uh, let me see. There's our war indicator there. Lovely. And on the other side of the rear, there's our war indicator there. It's coming down. There's it there. Oh, didn't go anywhere. I'm moving across. There's where it's supposed to go on. Very nice. So these rear brakes were banged in a wee bit whenever I first brought it into the garage and put it up in the air. And notice these back brakes were a bit sticky. And uh, the van was a wee bit hard to sort of move into position, you know. So there's a boot off that slider pin. So I'd say that slider pin is going to be seized in there. And those pads are well done. Well, we've run into deaths already. Could hardly get these that wheel off. And I had to snap one of the studs in order to get the wheel off. So what happened was this bay here is the remains of that is still in there. And don't know where it's going to come up in camera or not. 
It's a wee bit of reflection. Uh, it's on Carrie Wampus. It's been crossed to edit. And, well, all the rest of them are, uh, yeah, they're all stripped. They've all been pulled, all the threads are pulled, you know. On this wheel, anyway, so these here have had the head chopped off them because there's a good lot of them there. And then show you one that's more obvious. Uh, maybe that one. Well, they're not they're not cut straight. So they've been a closed nut like that. And uh, there were four of these on the other side four and one that was open and what i've noticed in these tall alloy wheel nuts is well they're actually bottoming out i can see in there that they're they're bottoming out against the stud and regarding to this half a wheel stud well there's enough there to, to catch the the wheel spoke to the customer asked him what he wants to do uh how do we look to see if we can get these studs singly i can only get rear ones it seems so Actually, this hub, there's, it's, it's a wee bit shiny. It's still a wee bit shiny there. Uh, Shiny-ish, sort of, on the back. A lot more shiny than the other side. So, I think that's been changed. Oh, aye. And look at this. So, see the disc, the hub, nuts? One snapped. One has snapped. I didn't snap it. That's the way it was. Let's see. Anything else that's noteworthy there? That, uh... No way could have passed the MOT. Yeah. Well, we know about that already. And, uh, oh, he's, he's trying to make a bid for freedom there, aren't we, Spring Club? So it's not in the way, not when there should be. And if we look at our pads, eh, there's a good wee bit of meat in that one. With our jumpy out Spring Club there. We'll have a wee look around here. So those pads aren't worn very evenly. So something's going to be seized on here. I bet you. The threads here on the most part, on the most part I say, aren't too bad. But the problem are the, the ends of the studs are marred up. So what I, I think pro has probably happened here is Whenever they're pressing this hub on into the burn, uh, they've been resting it on the end of the studs and it's flattened them off. And now whenever you put the nut on, it just rips the inside of the nut to bits. Right, so I've had to put a chamfer on the, on the, on the first few threads there, you know, the first, first maybe four threads, because they were like, you know, fattened out, and uh, we are able to uh, get our wee chaser on there, our die, M14 by 1.5. So we've even, even able to do a uh, wee stumpy here as well. So I reckon I'll get about 20 mil, if you could have an inch or something, uh, purchase on Stumpy. But from what I've seen so far, you know, I reckon, I'm going to recommend to the punter uh, to do wheel burn, new hub. And uh, I'd say in six months' time, we'll be doing that anyway. Slater pins aren't totally seized, but uh, let's see. Yeah, not a breath of uh, grease on that. I like to leave the, the carrier here on at this stage, you know, because see this hub nut, this hub nut, the torque back on this hub nut is like 500 Newton meters, so I'm expecting that to be really tight. Now, because we suspect, strongly suspect this has been done by somebody else before, uh, well, I don't know what that's gonna be tightened up to, but anyway, even for these nuts here, 
uh, you know, if you haven't got pneumatic tools or windy guns or whatever, you stick a screwdriver in there and that will lock the disc for you, stop everything from rotating. Got a new tool, first time use, cheap. I'll put it on the Amazon store, I'll show you in a wee minute. Uh, first time, I don't know where this is any good or not. Bit of power about it. Actually, I got a couple of new tools. Just arrived today, so that was just out of the box. That thing there. Uh, I don't know what you call that. It's a, an impact anyway. Made by Nielsen in the UK. It's like a cheap old brand. But, you know, I, I've had a wee look at this and I've compared it to, you know, other photographs of other things. And to me, it's exactly the same as the Chicago pneumatic. You know, an exhaust out the front and what have you. And uh, I'll put it in the Amazon store. It's about 80 quid or thereabouts at the time of recording. You know, prices vary and all that, the mountain supply. There's it there. Uh, yeah, let me see. What does it claim? It claims 500 newton meters maximum torque. Uh, doubt that. Anyway, this here one here is still in the in the cellophane here. Now this thing is it's sort of like a cross between you know an error ratchet and an error impact. So it's an error ratchet that impacts, if you know what I mean. And I've seen a very good review uh, American guy did in this, but uh, has has exactly the same, and it was branded Mac tools. So you know exactly the same. It's actually a Facom and. Uh, French company, probably made in Taiwan. That uh, there's made in China, by the way. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> it, it's not going to break any records. You know, this here isn't like, you know, it's going to take off really stuck fasteners. It's not for that, you know, but uh, it'll do better than a ratchet. And, uh, you know, you can see all the, this, the thickness of the head there. This one's here's half inch. However, the caveat with this is you could have four of those for the price of one of them. And of course, with all air tools, you need to have good air, a good air supply, you know? So I run uh, mine at 120 PSI static pressure. So whenever you pull the trigger, that drops down to about the 90, which these are all sort of rated at. So, and it's all about the flow as well. It's not just pressure. So anyway, we'll see what this does. Oh, ho, ho, ho. lovely and free. Right, now I can take this carrier off. So whatever the bolt size is behind that, whip that carrier off. This disc is actually part of company with the, uh, with the hub, which never happens, because they're normally rusted on, you know, even with those bolts out. So these holes here, not those bolt holes that held the disc on, but these holes, these bigger holes, uh, and behind there, there's uh, T50 Torx. So we'll just see if we can get you in that. Chain a bit of light in. So they're holding the, the wheel burn to the knuckle. So let me see, get that in there. You want to give that a good topping, toppy top top. Make sure she's seated, because if that Torx rings on you, uh, you're in diffs, you know. And this is just a wee three inch joey. But it should be okay, because believe it or not, well, the spec on them, that's not really that tight, you know. And I wouldn't recommend doing that with a gun. Right, so that's all five of those. Listen, I can get that in there. And uh, 
Well, you wouldn't normally have to do this. I'm going to put, I'm going to hold this disc because this disc is loose. You wouldn't normally have to do that. That disc is usually well stuck on there. And, uh, well, for uh, disc removal, I'll show you, I'll, I'll take the two of these off. You know, the other side, the other side's well crusty. Anyway, to pull this hub off the knuckle, so uh, M10 by 1.5 bolts, so that one there's too short. That's like two and a half inches long there. That there's about four inches, but the threads are a wee bit ropey. So I have a couple of a couple of gearbox bolts here. So I'm going to use them. So we're going to use the threads. Uh, that, that are the disc threads, the threads that are in the disc, and screw this in. One at the top and maybe one at the bottom. You could just do it with one, maybe, you know? So, uh, let's see if we can get that lined up better. Than that. So, with a busted nut in there, or stud. So, you just need to look through and see where you can get where you can get onto the, onto the knuckle, you know, and uh, thread one of these bolts in, maybe there, but whenever we get it off, we'll, we'll see. Didn't even need the lower one, this was so easy. So let's breathe wet to this. And that's her off. So you can maybe see there we're pressing against that we spot there. And uh, you know, that's how we look. There's other places. If you need it, if this, if you had a tape one, you know, you'd probably go against there. That's a good beefy bit of the knuckle there. Right then, we we'll have the two of them off now. So, and this one is clearly, it hasn't been off ever, maybe. And this one has been replaced. So, it was too easy, that one. And uh, this one here was more sort of real world. So, I had to use the two of them, you know, to press it off. And these torques, I spoke too soon earlier on when I said, uh, uh, they're not that tight and all that <laughs> so i had to upgrade that to half inch drive but got there that's no big deal you know it's not not a problem and uh well i have this here tool that i got i don't know where uh, it was discontinued or whatever or it was miss wrong price or something but i see now they're dirt cheap you know really really too cheap it's like 20 quid or something like there's no way you'll buy that for two and i actually got that for uh, in case you get stuck drive shafts, and it's it's supposed to be for the rear hub there, as you can see. But uh, we're gonna maybe use it to take these discs off. But there's a, there's a million ways of doing that, you know. Taking the disc off the hub, it's no big deal. Like. So this is the uh, the one that has probably never been removed before. That looks very very red. So yeah, but the the drive shaft that didn't take, you know, didn't that didn't have to hit with a hammer. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. So there's our wee imprint there, and there's our wee imprint there. We're pressed against. There's, there's, there's loads of metal here at the bottom to press onto, and uh, again, same place at the top, staying away from the ABS sensor. Right, so <coughs> take this uh, disc, separate this disc from this hub. You know, as I said, there's a number of ways of doing it. The thing to you know consider though is that this. ABS ring here, you know, you don't damage it. So if you're going to flip this on the other side and start beating it on this desk or something, well, you could do that because 
you know, the bit that the the bit at the back of the hub here where the drive shaft mates to here and here is raised, you know, it is off it. So if you do put that on the ground, I would suggest putting it on a bit of wood or whatever, you know. I have a, a plastic tile floor here. So I'm okay doing that, I think. I hope. So if you, if you damage that in this process, you need to buy a new bearing. Now, I'd be pretty confident that, see if I struck that on each side with a copper mallet. Copper, you know, you'll get a better strike on it. A steel mallet, you will tend to bounce. Or I could go each side of that with the, uh, you know, the air hammer, and it would probably come. But I'm going to show you, I have this tool here, and I may as well use it. And this is the idea, and in case you get a really, really stuck one or whatever, this is a bit more genteel, you know? So, as I said, this tool, it's not actually designed to do this, but it, it will do it. I bought it for stock drive shafts, but anyway, I think I said that already. Uh, so, it just so, it, you know, because this tool is designed for transit, it has the correct stud spacing. Um, that is just a thick plate then, is what I'm using. Then that will go over that. You could, and I've seen guys doing this, and or heard of guys doing this, I should say, they didn't actually see it. Uh, you know, they've got an old brake disc and drilled holes on it in the appropriate positions. All right, just went and got those uh, bolts there. Did I call them nuts earlier on? I might have, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so the idea is, you get a few of them in there. A couple of threads, you know. Sort of level with the, the hub, you know. May as well put a lot of them in. Five in this case. Get them as level as you sort of can, you know. Oh, and there's a bit sticky. And anyway, stick that on it. Yeah, there enough. And uh, well, you just simply put the studs on and tighten them down, sort of evenly, and that'll press the disc off. I'm going to use a few washers because. The alloy wheel nuts, they want to mar them up. Right, so there's our alloy wheels, wheel uh, studs, nuts. And as evenly as possible. The other thing people use, uh, if it couldn't be bothered drilling holes in a, an old brake disc, the, they use the whole wheel itself. In this case, this, car, this van has all the wheels on it, so you don't want to do that. But it has a steel, uh, a steel spur wheel. So if you could be bothered taking that off. And, uh, you know, And using the spur wheel, if you could be bothered doing that, like. You know? So there we go, that's that. In real time, my friends, in real time, so, we knew this one came, up, came apart. I think, uh, looking back in the footage, you know the way I stuck a screwdriver on it? And then I blotted the hub nut off, that sort of uh, liberated it. 
you know. So there we go. <coughs> the other observation here as well is, uh, is that the shot? The other observation is there's that wee broken one there. Uh, this disc is in worse condition than this. They're, they're both much on much, let's be honest with you. But uh, yeah, it appears to me anyway that uh, yeah, you can see there's there's more rust than this on this one which is the left hand one, and then this one where we see the, the hub and the bearing has been changed. It appears that they've put a new disc on that side and not on uh, the other side. So they've just put one disc on, which I don't know. Maybe if you're on a budget. Okay, so now we'll have to do a bit of a clean up. So we need to clean up all in here and uh, where the disc mates here as well and we'll have to clean up this hub face but you know we'll do that we'll do that bit once on the car and uh, there we can see this this is significantly prouder than the uh, ABS ring but here we need it is here yeah so I'm gonna do most of it with that and uh, finish her off with the emery paper I think if we'll have a look at this new bearing. <laughs> Grease is flying out of that. But, uh, well, it's not noisy. And clearly we don't want to go too near that ABS sensor with that method of the whizzy wheel, you know. So I just do round it by hand. I'm going to try and take that ABS sensor out, it will more than likely snap. So it's just that wee bit behind there. And the other thing I do sometimes if it's crusty. You get the, the tail of a fail, you know. Takes off the worst of the barnacle. Because these are closed holes and we're going to be reusing these torx bolts. The procedure does not say to change these, but I would say whenever you get a new bearing, which we'll probably do on the left hand side and maybe this one as well, in the future, uh, I'm going to clean them up, bit of thread locker on it, you know, if a bolt goes into a closed hole, well, technically it's a screw. But and if your drive shaft displays, you know, was a bit sticky in the hub, this one wasn't. The other side uh, definitely needs it. I like to give it a good dosing and that's just WD-40. It makes assembly a lot easier, you know, because that's going to go through like a sweetie. And, uh... Go on, turn. And then, obviously, disassembly in the future. It'll make it a lot, uh, a lot nicer. It's 
hold the bus a wee minute. I've just realized something. You see this hub and bearing here? And you see the way I said earlier on there, if you had that sitting on the ground, you know, this inner bit here is raised from the uh, ABS ring. So, you know, you have lesser chance of damaging it if you do hit it, if you do hit the disc to get it off. Right, well, this then is a generation three style bearing, style bearing. So what I'm waffling on about there, this here, for example, is a generation two. And you still, you have to press that into the hub like that. So it's not bolt on like the way that this bolts on with these bolts here, you know? But it comes with the hub here already in the bearing. And the telltale sign is this domed bit there on the outside, you know? So you don't press that hub in, like the way maybe you would with this, you know? So this is a traditional style bearing, a press in style, where you press the hub in, and therefore what you would have is that would be flush then, you know? So that would be flush with that, you know what I mean? So you, when you press that in, you'll see this surface here, at more or less, probably slightly less, slightly lower than the, the level there. But this has to be a generation three. So the reason why I'm saying that is I said right at the start of the video earlier on, when we were having difficulty with these studs, I said, well, it looks as if that's been, you know, put down in a press and then the burn pressed on. Well, that can't be the case because you, you would buy this here as this assembly. So where I was assuming that uh, this was a press in was, this is a Transit Mark 8 that we're working on here. So from 2012 on, uh, you know, it'll be a Mark 8. A Mark 7, you would you'd buy the bearing, you know, just on its own. And you'd maybe buy the hub separately and you would press one in until t'other. And you would end up with sort of that. And that would be flat then, you know. So that bit there would be, would be sort of flat. It wouldn't be domed like that. You know, there wouldn't be a, a lip there. So, yeah. Well, hasn't solved the mystery. How did the, how the hell did they manage to butter all these studs up in the same way? You know, they're all mushroomed out, uh, mushroomed and, you know, the ends of them were damaged, which in turn damaged all the wheel nuts. So, that's a mystery. I'm gonna have to park that, don't know. Now then, <clears throat> with our faces all cleaned up, as we can see here and here, so have to be flat, no rust, you know. Uh, I like to put, I would normally put a bit of grease on these surfaces. Now, all the grease does is to prevent corrosion. You know what I mean? And if you watch my videos at all, you'll know that I am not an advocate of copper grease. Copper grease, I do use it on occasion, steel on steel as an anti seize but that is its only time you can use it. More often than not, there's more times than not, you don't use it. And here's one occasion, you don't wanna use it. You do not wanna put copper grease anywhere near this ABS ring because there's copper in it and you run the risk of, you know, bridging those segments with copper. So it doesn't matter if I put a whole load of that weight. This is ceramic grease that I use quite a bit. And you can uh, use it between steel and aluminium interfaces, prevents galvanic corrosion. Copper grease is no good when in contact with aluminium surfaces, it will cause galvanic corrosion, cause the thing to seize with aluminium. So steel on steel only. And uh, yeah, anywho, with that out of the way, disc on a bit of wood, I'll keep it up a wee bit. And uh, we'll just pop that in. Liner holds up, lovely. And, the disc, the bolts, disc the hub bolts, you're supposed to replace them. 
and uh, there's the best place to get them there. Forward works out about they're about I got them for like one pound fifty each. Pack of five does one disc. You're supposed to change these because they're stretch bolts. Now a lot of people probably don't. However, in this occasion, you can see they have the thread locker already on them. On this occasion, on this hub here, we had one that was snapped. So the torque spec of this, of these bolts, is 30 nm's, 30 newton meters, plus 90 degrees. So as a general rule of thumb, this is what I go by anyway, general rule of thumb, if you see a specification, a torque specification, that has an angle, so a value and then an angle, okay, we're only gonna put these in sort of temporary. So it's just to hold it together. Not tight at all. So what was I saying there? Torque spec that has a value, a magnitude, and an angle. That's sure shooting that is gonna be a stretch bolt because the angle that you're putting on it is pulling the bolt. And that pull on the bolt is holding that to that, is clamping that, you know. So most people probably don't change those, but I had to, I was forced to because there was one snapped in this. That's those bolts are. Uh, it's a part number. Bought 10 of them, 144 each, plus that, 15 quid. So £1.50 each, including that. Now I get a wee bit of trade discount, like, but... Uh... But of course, we're going to replace them anyway, you know, because we don't know the history of this van. Clearly they had been out, they had to be out, you know, on this side anyway. You know, and they were more than likely, I would hazard a guess, they were just put back in again. So it's a one-time use stretch bolt on these ones. However, the ones that hold the hub, these Torx, are not stretch bolts. So you can reuse them. However, I would recommend if you're, if you are, if you're changing the wheel burn, you know, you buy a wheel burning assembly, it'll be the hub and all on the Mark 8s. It'll be hub bearing separately in the Mark 7s and 6s, although it looks identical, it looks the same from the outside here, you know what I mean? These are not stretch bolts. This is just a, a torque. Ford does not say to change these, they, but they do say to change these ones, so, you know, that's dead on. However, a wee bit of preparation. I have cleaned all these threads up, so all the muck and the dirt and whatever, and there was a bit of thread locker on them, I think, you know, and, uh, if you don't clean the threads up, then you could screw that in. Think you're at 53 newton meters, but you know the th if the threads are binding, then you haven't got the clamping force. It's the clamping force is what you're you're looking to achieve. You know, so you may achieve the torque according to your torque wrench, but the thing isn't clamped at the hub, and it's not very much. It's only rated at the torque spec of these here is 53 newton meters, which in my opinion seems very small to me anyway. Uh, so anywho, so what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do is a bit of high strength thread locker. Now, there's an Orwee tip maybe. See it anytime you pick up the thread locker off your, your shelf or your bench or your box or whatever it is, make sure you give it a good a vigorous shape because this stuff can separate if it's land sitting for a while, you know. Make sure you give it a good old shape. Now, that's, that's not me saying that, Loctite say that. So this is a high, high strength stuff. You could use red, blue is a medium strength. Uh, this is high, uh, red is, what is a class of as permanent or something. This is high strength, which is the green stuff. And a bit on the, on the threads. Doesn't need a whole lot, a little dabble, do you? So, 53 newton meters. And of course you want to do it in a diagonal pattern, you know. So that your hub goes on square. Don't be, squ don't be square. But they are not stretch bolts. 
and Ford does not say they change those torques once. But if they've been out in a couple of times, you know, you need to watch they're not going to start ringing on you. Right, so off camera, I've uh, cleaned up the hub face a wee bit there. I've fitted the carrier back on again, which has been refurbed up. You know, new, uh, new brake hardware there. I'm just going to put two holders in for us there for the minute. So we'll loosen these things off here. A wee bit. And turn that back. So 30 newton meters in a diagonal star pattern. Do that one. That's grand, plus 90 degrees. And so we'll give them all a wee mark. At 12 o'clock. There we are. And let's change over to a half inch drive ratchet. Because it's right, it's right wee, it's right wee hoof in this here. Like. More not. There we go. So my latest hypothesis number, whatever it is, on why these wheel studs were damaged is this. I thought initially that this was a press and bearing and these studs were damaged because of you know it being pressed in. We've ascertained it's not a press in. The hub that is, you know, so the the bearing is bolted on, but in this Mark Eight version, uh, the hub and bearing are as one, so that you don't separate them; they don't come separately. So what I'm thinking now is they've used these, as I mentioned before, they've used these closed nuts, and they've hoofed that in so much, and they've realised it's bottoming out on that on the end of the stud. So the stud's too long for the for the nut, basically, you know and uh, they realise that the wheel isn't clumped, the wheel's still loose, and they've hoofed and hoofed and hoofed and hoofed, you know, until uh, it's done in the end of these. And then whenever I go to take them off now, some of them were, they must have caught on, and some of them, the head was chopped off them, you know. This one here, we stubby, for example, and then you might think to yourself, well, you shouldn't be giving that back to the customer with that. Yeah, we'll recommend, I think we'll be doing the two burns in this vehicle anyway, in the near future, but anyway, See, whenever I went to take that off, you know, that, that was cross-threaded, this one, about mid, at the midpoint. So, and the, you know, it wasn't clamping, the, it wasn't doing anything, it wasn't clamping. So now it will actually, you know, apply a bit of torque to the wheel, to the hub. So, you know, it'll be better than it was. So all that leaves us regarding this uh, brake disc job. Uh, obviously the caliber has to go on and all, but we'll not worry about that. We'll still have our screwdriver stuck in the top of the disc. Just out of shot, just there as it was, it hasn't changed. So this washer that was in here, and I've cleaned this washer up a right bit, and I'm reusing it, and I'm reusing the nut. If you change the bearing, you know, it'll probably say use a new nut and all that there, but I'm happy enough. But this torque here, the torque specification, well, it's 250 newton meters first stage, it says to rotate the wheel five times or something in an opposite direction, and then ultimately it's 500 newton meters. It's a massive torque. Now, I understand that level, that magnitude of torque, with the previous type of bearing. I keep rambling on about this, the previous type of bearing. So what is actually happening is the drive shaft, the shaft, this end here, is being used to clamp the bearing together, to hold the bearing together, you know? And this type of bearing, you know, 
there's really no need for that but I have double checked the Mark 7 torque spec for this front hub nut and the Mark 8 it's the same so even though they've changed the style of burning they're still stating uh, the 500 newton meters but anyway to achieve that clean the washer up and a bit of grease on the side that the nut's going to go on to reduce friction so I'm just using uh, what is that high performance burning grease so it's a petroleum based grease and this is the only occasion uh, you know I would use petroleum based grease anywhere near any of this assembly so I'll go on a wee bit about the uh, slater pins and all and I'll show you a wee bit on the rear what I found on the rear which I'm gonna uh, go into a wee bit because clearly you know whoever's done this job didn't know what they were doing and so here we go 250 is the first stage yeah. and it says rotate the wheel backwards five times or the wheel to the disc or the hub or whatever you want to call it that's about five times isn't it? and then 500 newton meters which is basically the max of this torque wrench so we'll see if we can even achieve that Yeah, there we go and there we cover them and our split pin so i just want to show you something about slider pins these slider pins and these here and you know brake hardware and i'm filming this wee bit because this is on the basis of what i've seen that has been done on this transit so as we saw right at the start of the video this one here was sort of sitting out the way it was sort of proud and i've changed these brake hardware these are single, so there's one each side, you know. So normally, a lot of brake hardware has a band going across, joining the two in the guard. But anyway, so this top one was, you know, it was able to move away, you know. So the brake pad wasn't clipped in, you know. The slider pins, so clearly you have a top one and a bottom one. So before I put the caliper on, it is my habit just to check just to pull this bottom one out and make sure I have it's the one with see that wee rubber that's a wee anti-vibration thing there and you can see I've been using silicon grease on this so the clear sort of stuff you could use red rubber grease or whatever however you do not want to use copper grease of any description that is petroleum based because it would swell that wee rubber thing you know it's that wee rubber thing there so i'll swell that and that'll seize that slider pin in so the thing about the slider pin with the rubber on the bottom here so it goes on to the trailing edge so the wheel here is rotating clockwise in a normal you know driving so you're driving forwards it rotates clockwise so the solid pin then is at the top so because that's where your force is that your your when your caliper is trying to counteract whenever you break so this one here is a solid pin and it does not have the wee anti-vibration thing you know so that is at the top in this case because it could very well go you know go at the top depending on the position of the caliper and we'll see that in a minute at the back so the other reason why you want to change these spring clips is there's one there that is broken so there's a piece missing off that so you, you don't want to reuse them and yes in this case i had to buy them separately because if we look at the rear here the uh caliper is to the rear of the disc so the trailing edge is going to be at the top so with the the wheel rotating clockwise the leading edge so the solid pin is in here at the bottom here 
and the, the pin with the anti-vibration rubber thing is at the top. So some people say it uh, goes top, goes bottom or whatever. Depends where the caliper is. You know, which side of the disc the caliper is sighted. This is where the real mess up was on this fan, you know. So I said right at the start, uh, this one of these here is binding, uh, needed a handbrake cable. But anyway, none of these pans were in the right place. And, the, and you know, and the piston here at the back wasn't positioned correctly. Now I have this all together, and I'm not going to take it apart again to show you, but I'll try and demonstrate it the best I can. So in this particular setup, the wear indicator, see the wee hole there, goes inboard towards the piston, not outside, because the pans are different. Not just for the wee, the wee cutout for the wire, but there's wee pins, those are basically flat pins and you see that we that's that's flat as well but on that inboard pad there is a male pin sticking out to catch the gap in the piston i want to say the gap in the piston so i've drawn you know a mock-up of what the piston looks like so it's it's the slots in the piston that you use the wee pins you know to rotate rotate the piston in now on this particular van um the left hand side screws in anti-clockwise. The right hand side screws in clockwise. Now, I remember that. I had, I had old transits years and years ago when, when there were good vehicles and uh, the, the wheel nuts on the left were left hand thread and right and right hand thread. So I sort of remember that that way. And I use this thing here, which it doesn't, you know, you just, you just find out what way it screws in that it goes whatever way you want, the pneumatic pusher runner thing. Anywho, right, so here's the pads that came out of that. So on one side, on the left hand side, it had two wear indicator pads, which has the two male pins. You see the pin sticking out? And you can clearly see that that was positioned on the outside, on the ears of the caliper. So that should have been inboard, and that pin was supposed to catch that slot in the piston, you know? This pad was in board, so it was in their correct position. However, we can see the pin there. The pin was getting crushed, you know? So that pin has been flattened out and crushed and what have you. And that's because, you can maybe, I don't know, you can see it, but the gaps of the piston were vertical. So they weren't catching the pin, you know. So the idea of that is so the pin doesn't rotate, you know. And it's the same here. So, was that in the right position? I think that was the only one that was in the right position. That was in the correct position, but the piston wasn't lined with the pin. And again, this side here, you can maybe see the imprint. Can you see the imprint off the piston? So anyway, the piston uh, is pressing on the pins, resulting in a nap and resulting in uneven wear. So you see a thick side here and skinny there because it's riding on those pins, the piston, you know? So that should have been in the outside, you know, that, that, that by there. And that one needed to be on the inside with the gap in the piston, that gap there, marrying up that pin so it doesn't rotate. Oh yeah, it's just another thing. I just seen that there sitting there, I left that there for a reason. So I replaced the slider pins at the back, and these were the original ones out of it. What I see quite a bit is people do not clean up in here so that that seals, you know? So what we saw right at the start was one of these here, the rubbers was, was off it, and that allowed, I think it was that one there, that allowed that thing to basically rust. You see, you see, you see that one there? Is it gonna come up on camera? So it's stinking dirty uh, with rust and stuff in here. So your boot isn't going to seal. 
you know. Hardly a must go over it. So I see that all the time. That, that bit there isn't cleaned up. Maybe clean up the rest of the pins, but these pins have just no grease on them at all and what have you. So no petroleum based grease on slider pins because you've got this rubber boot and you've got this thing here. This will swell if you use you know that purple Permatex stuff you see people using? That's petroleum based, copper grease, definite no-no. And uh, you know, that sort of burring grease that I showed earlier on. Don't put any petroleum based greases near this thing here. So what I used in this case, and sometimes I alternate, you know, but in this case, I used that. That is available on the Amazon store. And uh, if I can get the lid off it. Right, it's, a, it's a clear stuff, you know. You can use the red rubber grease. I prefer that actually, than the red rubber grease. R red rubber grease to me is very sticky, you know. And then this ceramic base grease, I use quite a bit. You'll see that white stuff plastered all over everything. And the reason why I'm using that white stuff Again, that's in the Amazon store. It's about a 10 out of 10. 10, 10 last year for ages, although this one here is near done. But the reason why I'm using that is for the wheel hub surfaces, anything that comes in contact with aluminium. Again, if you use copper grease for on a steel to aluminium interface, you will suffer from galvanic corrosion. Copper and aluminium does not mix. So the other wee thing is this, the, the brake wear indicators, or lack thereof, at the back. So when we found this initially, the strands of the, the, you know, the wires were just twisted together. So the problem with that is the water, the moisture, will track up the loom, and the wire will rot on up the loom. So what I have done there was I cleaned the strands up with isopropyl alcohol and electric contact cleaner, and soldered them together. Soldering because the soldering creates a water block. So that's the reason why I do that. There's a lot of people saying, oh, you should crimp, or you know, people prefer crimping over soldering and stuff. The soldering will create a water block and stop tracking up the strands. And then that is mastic coated tubing on that. And that, uh, you know, that'll seal it up as well. So if uh, oh, we better clean it up in there, a wee pigtail, it's looking a lot better. And uh, I have spent some amount of time on these wheel studs and nuts. Not just in this wheel, but uh, I've discovered that a lot of them were no good. So. Every nut on this van, I've had to uh, chase every one. Some I've had to cut the tops off them so that, uh, well, so that they'd go fully home on the studs, you know. On this side here, the left hand side, so that one there, had the dress set as well, and. Some of them had the had the tops cut off already. Some of them I had to cut them off. But what I discovered was they weren't uh, threaded through completely, you know. So the long and the short of it is that none of the wheels on this transit van were actually clamped on properly at all. Right, well, I had a run on there, so I knew that. We're good to go. All the warnings are away. That's how we look. I'll just show you. So let's see. Let that button there. Informations. System check. 
No messages. So that's uh, we're good. Now how do we come out of that? Truck computer. That'll do. Thirty men to get on this thing does. Right, we'll take a wee run to bed in the breaks then. <laughs> Thanks for watching. All the best as ever.